What's going on guys? Um, with no further ado, I have decided to make the very heavily demanded 3DAP video. Um, this is just an overview on my Mystery Wrench 3DAP. It is a tri-zip pack. I use this as a 24 hour to, you could even flex it to 72 hour um, pack. It's probably my most used bag. I have bigger rucks, be it Mystery Ranch, or Burla Stock, or Crossfire, and uh, this one gets almost all of the airplay for uh, for obvious reasons. Um, I, I really don't have time to go out very often and make a uh, live at, live out of my bag for five days. Usually, it's one to two days when I do any sort of excursion, training, etc. So this bag gets almost all of the use. Um, as you can see, multicam, pretty uh, pretty standard for me. Uh, but the more prominent feature on it is definitely the tri-zip. Uh, I really like the tri-zip setup. It's something that I, I'm not sure if Mystery Ranch pioneered, but they definitely incorporated a ton in uh, their bags. And all it is is you have a uh, you have uh, basically three zippers that form the uh, the axis of the main compartment. You have the top lid. <clears throat> I've seen here, and then you have this vertical main zipper there. Uh, the biggest benefit to this is you can kind of tailor your load around it. So for example, if, uh, if I'm bedding down for the night, rotating out of you know observation or whatever, and I'm trying to get to my food, uh, I don't have to open up the lid and pull everything out. I can just very, very easily reach in, grab that main zipper, undo these buckles, and I have access to my main compartment. So that's kind of the biggest selling point. These bags are very popular. Um, they're extremely popular, actually. So they're kind of they they kind of became hard to get, but I managed to get my hands on one. So yeah. I'll uh, just quick overview over the bag and what I've done to it. I've added pouches on the side, but other than that, and then tape straps. Other than that, it's really kind of standard. The biggest thing I did do to it is, like I said on my Patreon post, I, I'm a big fan of permethrin. So this is no different. This got treated with permethrin. It'll keep ticks, mosquitoes, uh, horse flies, and the like away. And uh, where I live here in South Florida, that's extremely important. Just kind of, uh, Just kind of a quick... Not disclaimer, but just kind of explaining why the setup is the way it is. This is the the pack right now, and the loadout I'm going to show is set up for a 24 to 48 hour uh, recce. And by recce, I mean like an observation. I'm the, you know this is set up for posting up on whatever objective needs reconnaissance, and you know sending out the drone, taking photographs, getting direct observation, taking notes. Uh, because I don't have a higher team to kind of give this information to, you'll notice that there is no radio. There's no radio setups. This has a radio pocket. But again, no ASIP, no Prick 152, none of that. No Yesu or anything like that. Uh, because I have no one to tell this to. This is kind of me gathering intel for me and my little group. So, understand that when you look at this loadout, it is tailored for that mission, and it's also tailored for my environment. What do I mean by that? I don't have cold weather gear in here. I don't need cold weather gear in here. It's spring here in South Florida. Uh, today's weather is somewhere hovering in the mid 80s and it'll cool down to like the mid 70s tonight. Uh, I know a lot of guys that are gonna be watching this kind of don't, if you haven't been to South Florida, lived here for a little while, you're kind of not gonna get the weather. It really does not get cold. You really will notice that you will never need it. At most, you'll need what they called in Vietnam a jungle sweater, which is just throwing on like a long sleeve and uh, a whoopee. And that'll get you through 99% of the year in South Florida. So the setup, naturally, will not have cold weather gear. Instead, there's an emphasis on other things, water purification and weather in particular. But without further ado, let's get to it. I've decided to start with the outer pouches first, and then I'll kind of work my way to the lid and work my way to the main compartment. So uh, if you don't care what's in these outer pockets, you can skip ahead. But 
to start, uh, the pack has molly on the sides, and because I like having some stuff more quick access than others, I like having pouches on that area to be able to, like I said, quickly access it. This is a, I believe it's a Warrior Salt Systems 200 round drum pouch uh, for a saw drum. Pretty useless for its intended purpose of carrying saw ammo for 99% of civilians. However, they make extremely good small GPs or sustainment pouches, or you know, a small sustainment pouch or like a big GP. Uh, they kind of carry a lot and you can stuff them. They're pretty simple. So, real quick. In the top, I have the same tarp from the Jungle Rig video. This is, I believe, the Bushcraft Outfitters. I think it's an 8x5 or a 9x5. Again, preset with 550 cord. It is a waterproof tarp. And, yeah, that's it. It's a waterproof tarp if you want to know more. Uh, I cover it in the Jungle Kit video. And this is just a green outdoor research rain jacket. I forget what model. It's... A civilian jacket, so it's got white lining on the inside. Uh, this is just, you know, if it's pouring rain and I, I really am just tired of getting wet, I will throw this on. Or if I feel like I just don't, you know, I can't afford to be wet for whatever reason, be it the noise or because I'm about to bed down and I want to kind of sleep comfortably, I'll throw that on. Um, big note, depending on what I'm doing... I may not even throw on wet weather gear. Um, for example, if I know I'm only going to be out for maybe a day, I won't even bother. I'll just stay wet. It sucks. It is what it is. Um, if, especially if I'm out in the sun, moving around, moving in the daylight, I'm going to dry up pretty quickly. If anything, being wet is kind of, I'm not going to say a good thing. It makes a ton of noise. It makes everything heavier. But it's kind of a nice thing. Um, as it evaporates, it takes heat with it. So... I kind of don't think too much about it. Uh, you'll, you'll notice I'm a lot of the times I'm not very wet weather centric, but I do have it with me. So let's move on to the other side. All right, guys, moving on. This is the other side of the pack. I have uh, one of the velocity systems. I think it's one of their um, canteen pockets or one of their GPs. Uh, I think it's a canteen pouch. I keep this on this side. This is again, the philosophy of use. If you like to use that phrase. Behind this pocket in particular is just quick access. That's why it's lashed on the outside and not stuffed on the inside. Um, you'll notice my really shitty bunging to it. It's just because this thing likes to swing around. It's just bungeed on there. It needs to get trimmed up a bit, especially here. But it's just bungeed on there so it doesn't swing around that much. It might get replaced at some point by a similar pouch. But for now, I kind of like having this one. And uh, this is spare magazines. Um... I just, I keep a couple spare mags in here. This would be just to kind of plus up any sort of uh, patrol or anything like that. I keep a pair of gloves in here. I like doing that because it dampens the sound. And uh, it helps kind of make sure this stuff isn't moving as freely in the bag. But, yeah. I just keep that there. Hydrophobic pouch. You know, you guys are all familiar with it. And yeah, usually two to four magazines. In this case, I have two 30-rounders and a 20-rounder. Again, they're just there for if for some reason an engagement happened and we needed to kind of plus up on mags. Everyone in the team would be carrying anywhere from two to three extra mags, and that would kind of just be your get-home ammo. Because as we all know, if you're on a reconnaissance mission and it's not a recon by fire, uh... And you get spotted, and you get shot at, it's a failed mission. And now your focus is going to be to get out of there. So yeah, those are just kind of a couple spare mags plus up. I like keeping quick access because if you need magazines, you need magazines. And the last thing you want to do is be dumping your ruck or your pack to get to magazines. But uh, since I'm on this side, I'll start off with the pockets below these mag pouches. Right here, USGI 2-Quart Canteen in water bottle pocket. I prefer these over one quarts. Uh, you'll see the other side has a one quart. The only reason why I have a one quart there is because they don't make a nesting canteen cup for two quart canteens, as far as I know. Um, so 
I decided instead of just throwing the canteen cup or throwing a, a mess kit or something like that inside my bag and then having it rattle around or having to just have a net mess kit for that, uh, I just carry a one quart in nests. Um, again, uh, I'd probably be wearing this with more water on my gear via my air light or my jungle kit. I would drink my pack water first. So this two quart's probably gonna get the most use first, followed by the one quart, unless I know I'm gonna drink the one quart in one gulp. Um, you might be asking why the two quart over a one quart or an algene or something like that, which I own all, but the two quart is squishy. And as this thing runs out of, uh, runs out of water and fills up with air, you can squeeze that air out kind of like a bladder and then uh, tighten down the lid. And guess what? It now doesn't make as much noise as something like a one quart would where you can't squeeze it. So that's why I'm a big fan of the two quarts. Uh, I have multiple ones, some with the uh, gas mask top, some without. But yeah, they're, they're great. I really, really like the two quart uh, over any other canteen. Besides maybe those one liter uh, plat attacks, but that's just, be, that's just over convenience. Those are, uh, I bought a bunch at once and those kind of fit better on gear than, uh, than a two quart. So, like I said, that is the two quart. And on this side, I have a one quart canteen. And the only reason why I have it is because nesting canteen cup. You'll see that I camouflage my canteens. Uh, just a quick note when I do, this one isn't full of water right now. But I try to keep, I try to tape off a strip, especially if they're the, this is a Nalgene canteen, so it's translucent. So you can kind of see what's inside. And uh, I tape down a strip. Uh, if the thing has graduations, I'll tape down that graduation strip. And uh, I'll leave it unpainted so I can see how much water's in there. You can kind of just feel it. So it's not, it's not very necessary, but it's just something that I personally do. Uh, that's it for the outer pockets. Um... Sometimes you'll see that I'll be carrying a machete in one of these pockets. Uh, this one will usually get taken off. You'll see there's this extra bungee here. That's for the handle of an axe or machete. Uh, there's a bungee. And that's just kind of to keep it in place. I'll keep it in place also with the compression straps going along the sides. In this case, I'm not carrying it. Uh, I realized I didn't use the machete that much recently. There's been wildfires and stuff around, so... Uh, if I'm getting in a thick brush, I kind of don't want to cut it down. So I threw on, naturally, the wet weather pocket. But let's get to the lid and then the main compartment. All right, guys, this is the lid of the pouch, or of the pack. You'll notice it's got Velcro on it. I just throw on an IR flag. This is on there. Again, this is on there when I'm doing just regular stuff with night vision or training. This will come off if there's any situation where... I don't want to be seen or I'm concerned about night vision signature. Uh, this patch will come off. In that case, I don't wear any patch. Uh, or I might put on those Matbach permethrin treated um, dot or flag patches just to kind of keep the bugs off. So we'll start with the small pocket. Um, there's, you know, some people are like, oh, your gear looks too clean. Dude, there's like gouges in my gear. Like I clearly use it. But this is just a little survival pack. It's got a chem light. It's got... You know, I, I just threw this in there the other day. Just a little knot reminder uh, because I forget things. Trash bag, uh, unscented, but it is a white trash bag. A lot of people like contractor bags. This is what I have on hand. So I would use this if I needed to waterproof something or if I really, 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 really needed to use the bathroom and I needed my Biffy bag that's in the main compartment. Made too much smell. Uh, I could just throw it in this. Probably wouldn't want to, but... Yeah. Chem light, you know. This is uh, just an orange panel. It's not quite a VS-17 panel, but it is, uh, it folds out. I just keep it rubber banded, otherwise this thing will just kind of spread everywhere. Good. Kept on for signaling emergencies, that sort of thing. This is, uh, it's one of those K-Bar little fishing survival kits. Uh, there's a lot of water down here, so there's a bigger emphasis on if you needed to survive for whatever reason. Your main staple will probably be fish. This unscrews, and there's a bunch of stuff in there. It's almost all lures, a lighter, a very, very small, like, razor blade knife. Um, and it's just there 
This is just kind of as serving as a survival pocket. I've got 550 cord tied to it. Uh, I'd probably pull from my other 550 cord first in the bag or in my general purpose pouches over this. I'm not going to open it. I might do an overview some other time. But for now, it's just a survival kit dedicated to fishing. And I have a... Oh, I got a couple more things in here. I've got purification tablets. I'm just going to put those back in there. I don't want to drop them on the ground. Orange whistle, uh, you know, for signaling, making noise if I'm ever trapped somewhere. And then a uh, small Enola Gay smoke grenade. Um, one thing you'll kind of want to do with any of your throwables, uh, if you can, is you want to camouflage them. Um, these Enola Gays aren't super big of a deal. Uh, they're gonna spray out in this particular one that's gonna spray out purple smoke but so you're gonna be able to tell roughly where it is if you see it deploy but with any of your throwables you do want to camouflage them even if it's just throwing on some od green tape uh the last thing you want especially with frag grenades if you have access to them is someone to see it notice what it is e notice it easier and then throw it back i'm not saying that this is going to be any better but this will at least be a little better. Uh, the body of this thing is black. You know, there's points of contention. Oh, black isn't available in nature. You know, this and that. I just tape it up with tape. I leave just a little strips so and kind of tell what color the smoke grenade is. This is a smaller one. I would never use this for screening. This is almost purely a signal, uh, a signaling device. But yeah, so that's it for that zipper. Uh, I'll move on. I'll pack this up and I'll move on to the main compartment or the bigger lid zipper. All right, guys, moving on to the. Uh, larger of the lid zippers this one is going to have a lot of overlap with my other one except i keep a boo-boo kit in here uh this is just an ultralight and waterproof bag again if you need another signaling device high vis uh it's also easy to find in your pack in this case it's in the lid but if you threw it in a rock or something i like these little adventure medically this is a boo-boo kit this is not for a sucking chest wound or gunshot wound or uh, massive hemorrhage, anything like that. This is for, I stubbed my toe, I got a splinter, I got cut by a thorn, um, I, cut my, I cut my finger open and it's bleeding a bit, I'm feeling sick, I, uh, I put some pills in here too, just ibuprofen, um, Pepto, uh, Benadryl. Those are, you know, some of the main things I keep in here. Just something small like this. You can throw it to someone if they're feeling sick or, like I said, it's a boo-boo kit. And then I keep a tourniquet in there uh, for when there aren't boo-boos. But you need to stop bleeding really quickly. Uh, I try to throw in tourniquets everywhere as often as I can. Um, there's, it, it's negligible weight for massive benefit if you ever did need it. And if you need a tourniquet, you need a tourniquet and then an evac. So... I uh, I don't like messing with I don't like messing with that. It's just kind of throw as many tourniquets in your equipment as you can. Um, this is just a spot that I had one, but yeah. So there's that, and then there is a return from another video. This is my uh, miscellaneous Magpul Deca. It's got the same stuff as the other video. Uh, rope, little noisemaker, camo face paint, thermocell, zip ties, a buff, anti-fog, batteries. Um, if you want to know more on it, I'm not going to do it now. Uh, it's in, it'll definitely be in the Velocity Systems Jungle Kit video where I open it up and I kind of show the contents. But yeah, I keep this in the lid. It's, again, it's a GP, small things that I might need during a, during a pulp, like change of batteries or face paint. You know, RP, that sort of thing. <clears throat> Just stuff to stuff that I like to keep at least somewhat on hand so that I can get to it easily. And it's it's small items. Uh, small items I like to keep compartmentalized as best as I can. And this is no different. And uh, you might be asking, why is it the same pouch as the other one? Because I'm not made out of money. If I was made out of money, I would have six identical loadouts. I would have six identical contents and then i could just buy everyone equipment unfortunately i have to bankroll myself i'm not part of any bigger organization so stuff is this is other stuff i've bought with my own money or i've inherited from my time in the army and the army just never caught me keeping it so 
I gotta pay for all this. So you're gonna see a lot of overlap with a lot of load plans where I will pull stuff out of this bag and I'll put it in other bags. This is not a bug out bag. Um, if any of you had questions about that, like, oh, is this your bug out bag? No. My bug out bag is to get me home because I, if I'm ever gonna be further from home, I'll, have, I'll completely pack a new setup, but just kind of based off of my habits or anything, I have a bag, like an everyday carry bag that'll carry, that can get me home anywhere inside my county. I can just, you know, and maybe one of these days I'll go over that, but for now, this is just purely a field use bag. So we've gone over all the outer pockets and uh, let's move on to the main compartment. All right, guys, like I said earlier, big reason I like the tri-zip is yes, access to the main compartment through this vertical zipper here, but you can also grip and rip the lid off. And uh, I'll start off from the top. Uh, and I'll pull things out and then I'll work my way down. So this is For most of you you're familiar. This is a uh, camouflaged uh, Like a mosquito shroud or Neck shroud or you know, it's just a big camouflage mesh sheet uh, Dudes wear this uh, it scarves I use it to keep mosquitoes off my head to camouflage that silhouette of my shoulders. Um, I could wet it and keep my, my neck cool. And a big thing you want to do with a lot of the stuff you're packing is you want it to have multiple uses. And in this case, it's no different. This is wrapped around something. So <clears throat> I'll undo it, pull it off and carefully. And you'll see that I keep Oh, something else in here. This is just a cheap multicam balaclava. Um, if the bugs were really that bad, I would throw this on and then I would throw the um, the mesh over it. But this, again, is serving a secondary function. This is keeping everything together for my... If you haven't figured out from the little glimpses you've gotten by now. Cry Precision Nightcap. And naturally, the nightcap comes with night vision. Uh, pair of RNVGs here, covered up, you know, with a safety lanyard or whatever, just so I don't lose them. I'll leave that there. And then a Cry Precision nightcap. Uh, I have this in there because I wouldn't be wearing a helmet. I wouldn't be taking a helmet with me on this setup. Just in this particular case, I would just be taking the nightcap. So, Wilcox arm, Cry nightcap. Base plate, you know, obviously this interface is there. This interface is with the nods. Little uh, night core strobe, just if I needed it. 99% of the time it stays off. But yeah, I keep this wrapped up in there. I keep my, depending on what setup I'm wearing, I will keep my night vision in my pack for this reason. Um, it's closer to the top again because when I'm going to go grab it, I kind of want to just not fuss around, be able to go pick it up. Put it on, get it set up, and then get right back to pulling security or on mission or whatever. So, and then because I don't want this stuff flying around everywhere, I just shove it in the balaclava. All like that. And then wrap it up in this. And then that'll keep it adequately padded if I like drop my bag or my bag got thrown or whatever. That keeps it adequately padded. Um, and then, yeah, I could use every other bit of this stuff for whatever I need to. So, moving on to the rest of the lid, I have a Canon PowerShot camera. Um, yeah, camera, charger. There's a little USB in here. There it is. Somewhere that interfaces with the phone or a computer. So I can kind of just uh, move data from the memory card to, you know, a field laptop or a phone or a tablet. It's a camera, um, tripod, a small tripod for, uh, this works with the camera, you know, could use it if I needed to with the camera, but it's meant for this, a spotting scope. Like I said earlier in the video, this setup is for a observation, you know, like a reconnaissance patrol and observation. So stuff like this is coming with me. Spotting scope this is a major thing. You know, it's a small compact one. I think it's 10 by 33. Uh, I would bring this instead of binoculars if I just was, I knew I was going to be stationary for a while. 
I don't like using binoculars on, off of tripods. I much prefer spotting scopes. So I have this, <clears throat> again, for observation. Here I have my DJI Mavic Mini. It is a drone. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram for a while before I got deleted, you know that I'm a big proponent of drone use. I've had this for a while. This is the Mini 1. This is not the Mini 2. At some point, I'll upgrade. I just have cables and then the controller in there. But um, I, I give it its own little compartment because then I can just tell someone. If someone else is grabbing my pack, I just tell them, grab the gray Magpul DACA. Or if they don't know what a DACA is, grab the big gray Ziploc looking thing. And I know that my drone is there. This will interface with the phone. Um, I'm working on better solutions to make the phone... Uh, not emit as much signature or be an issue against a, cl uh, I'm not going to say peer, because I guess everyone is a peer, tar uh, peer threat to me right now, but more of a like, hey, I don't want to give off electromagnetic signatures more than I have to, besides just the signal to the drone. But for now, the drone is there. It's in the Magpul DACA. It's close to the top because, again, this is a reconnaissance setup. So pulling open the lid. Uh, last thing you can kind of see there is a BioLite solar panel. This is just to kind of keep some of the batteries, especially with the drone or the camera, just keep them topped off. It has a built-in, you know, battery, and it's just a solar panel. Uh, this is kind of a last resort thing. It's light enough that I bring it, but I really do not want to use it. I don't like using it. It keeps you stationary. It's big. Um, but yeah, that is if I needed to charge stuff for whatever reason, batteries discharged, got wet, needed to switch or just been using equipment a lot longer than we were expecting to, then yeah, I would switch. I would uh, use that. So in these little internal pockets, this one has a pack cover, just a multicam pack cover. I think it's still nylon or something like that. Just something very thin. I keep it there again. Uh, I would keep this in the waterproofing pocket on the outside, but I've always kept it in this pocket. And because of that, I always know where it is. Here I have a, uh, I used to have, no, I guess I don't have it. Oh, wrong pocket. Here I have, I believe it's the Armor Arbor Arms. It's a, it's a beaver tail they make. And you'll notice that there's extra buckles out here, these khaki buckles. These interface with this beaver tail. And uh, this is great for, yeah, it is the Arbor Arms. I just use this if I'm carrying my helmet and uh, I don't want to be wearing my helmet. I could stow it on the outside. It would go around here on the pack, but I could stow it there. Uh, it, it interfaces pretty well with the webbing on the bottom. I actually really like this. Uh, one of these days I'll take a photo showing its use, but I keep it stowed in there in case I need to stow a helmet. Or another thing it's really good at is stowing large, irregular shaped items. If I had like a big tarp or something I needed to transport or like wet clothing is another good use for it. You just kind of put the wet clothing in a mesh bag, put it in there, uh, and then it's drying out in the sun while you're patrolling and it's not getting all the rest of your stuff inside your pack wet. But <clears throat> let me just cut real quick to the main compartment. All right, main compartment. So you'll notice all the stuff's kind of trying to stand as best as it can. I'll just kind of work by what I pull out first. So dry bag, um, these are really common. I think they're surplus, like marine surplus or something. I like it. It's just a bag that I can keep stuff inside that I don't want to get wet. Um, the contents of this change consistently. Uh, in this case, uh, spare shirt, extra socks, more socks towel, wipe myself off, or if need be, keep myself warm. It's big enough to function as a blanket, a very, very thin blanket. And then I have hammock equipment. Uh, it's about to be the wet season here. Once uh, We don't really do the four seasons in South Florida. We do wet versus dry season, and dry season's ending. We've started getting the big rain, so I've switched over to hammocks. Um, just tree strap. I use the hammock. Rue single. It, it's just a civilian hammock in green. Other hammock strap for a tree. It's a good thing here. A lot of trees. So hammocks are kind of cool to tie off. And then, again, because I fucking hate bugs, an insect net. So I can wrap my hammock 
in that fine mesh and bugs can't get in uh, because bugs are a huge problem. This all goes into this dry bag. I put it in there. I squeeze it. Um, I only have a t-shirt and two pairs of socks. If it was a two-day mission, I'm only really going to change that clothes. Um, my emphasis is going to be, by and large, uh, not really changing clothes if I get wet, like I said earlier. It's going to be more like I need to switch out my socks so I don't get, like, trench foot or something. Or I'm just going to switch this out because I feel disgusting, and I just want to let my uniform or my clothing air dry. So that all goes into the dry bag. Uh, it fits very well. Or at least it, it, it fits as well as you can fit stuff like this. A lot of the contents are very poofy. So it, it requires maybe not like expert load planning, but you got to kind of like shove everything back in there. And then I keep the clothes higher up on it because the odds of me bedding down or having time, let's say if it was a reconnaissance mission, to set up a hammock to bed down are a lot lower then the odds of me needing to change my socks and shirt. And those of you unfamiliar with dry bags, fold the top, squeeze out the air from the valve, buckle the top, and then just squeeze out the air. Air comes out of that valve. I'm sure most of you are familiar. All right, so moving on. I have my hygiene kit, ultralight, matador pack, pouch. Um, I keep what most people keep in hygiene kits, a shaving kit, baby wipes for my ass or, you know, mostly for my ass or taking off face paint. A biffy bag. This is a poop bag. You poop in this. Um, that's just, look it up. Just look it up, man. Uh, and then, you know, just the usual hygiene kit, small toothbrush, razor blade, uh, Toothpaste, small little bar of soap. I think I keep a contact lens solution, eye drops in there. A shot wipe, I don't know why. Um, this is also my regular travel um, bag. So if I'm traveling somewhere normally, I just use the same hygiene kit because weight savings on a flight are no less important than weight savings on a patrol. So I just use the same little ultralight toiletry case but yeah that's my hygiene kit real simple um moving on jet boil uh those of you familiar with jet boils know what it is it's a little torch cooking thing boil water in it uh not that i would want to or need to uh at least not for filtration i would do it for food if i was you know making ramen or something but yeah jet boil real self-explanatory if you're wondering what a jet boil is google it uh, again, another return from the, uh, from the Velsus Jungle Kit video. So again, another water filter, because guess what? Water is very important to me. And food. Same as the other video. If you're curious, look up the Velocity Systems Jungle Kit video I made. Um, more food, because I get hungry. You know, first strike energy bar. This is like a gutted MRE with some other stuff of that in there. Cashews, match. I try to keep the MRE innards as much as I can, um, but, you know, the matches are more important to me. There's another source to make fire, a spoon, stuff like that. You know, food. Um, big thing I keep in here is the team item. It's heavy, or it's heavy compared to what it is. This is a Katadin team water filter. When I say I am serious about water filtration, I mean I am serious about it. Uh, the heat here will dehydrate. You will dehydrate pretty quickly. Um, I've been a heat casualty before. It's not fun. Dehydration played a role. Uh, also wearing full mop gear in the summer in Texas plays a role. But I try to mitigate those issues as much as I can. So I have brought it upon myself to be the bearer of the team water filtration. And I know other people are going to skip out on it. Oh, buy a live straw, buy this and that. I went ham and bought a big catadin. But it is heavy. It is a ceramic filter. It does have heft to it compared to what it is, but that's the price you pay for clean water. Um, moving on, e-tool. This is an entrenching tool. I keep it in the pouch just because it doesn't make noise. This is one of the Glock ones. It's As you can see, it's never been used. I had another e-tool, 
a surplus one, or I thought it was a surplus one. It was probably a Chinese made copy, and it's not. So, I keep an e-tool on me. Um, I'm trying this one out. It probably sucks also. All e-tools suck. They just, you just have them because they fit that niche. But the thing I like about this one is it does that. You get a little handle. It's a little, it's marginally better. I think this, I think this comes out. Yeah, and you get this little saw in it. So it's cool. It's not, it's not good at anything. Uh, it's not the best at anything. It's just okay at whatever you would flex it into. Um, but again, e-tool, not, not great, not terrible. So, yeah, I keep an e-tool with me because if you're a soldier or you're fancying yourself a soldier, you should have an entrenching tool with you. This is going to be your bread and butter for building any fortification, digging yourself into the ground. For a foxhole, this and that, so I keep an e-tool with me. Um, funny enough, the ground here sucks to dig through, but I have the e-tool anyways. So, that stays, uh, if you notice, it's in that little pocket. It's this little pocket here. It stays lower and close to the back. Again, another heavier item. That's why the catadin was next to it. Um, heavy items. And then, like I said earlier, solar panel. Um, let me just pack this stuff up, and then I'll give my closing thoughts. All right, guys, so closing thoughts on this video. Um, that is my three-day salt pack set up for, like I said, a 24-hour a to, if you, you can push it, but 72-hour reconnaissance patrol. Um, it's, it's not the lightest setup in the world. It's not the heaviest setup in the world. It is probably heavy for what a salt pack would be considered, but it's comfortable enough that I don't mind wearing it. Um... Some drawbacks to the bag, or not really drawbacks, but yeah, the size is a big one. Um, it probably could have more molly on it, specifically down here. It'd be nice to have some more molly, but you know, it, no, no, nothing's perfect, and this has been amazing for what I've used it for. Um, kind of just things that I think, do I think this bag is suited for everyone? No, not at all. Um, some people prefer a lighter three-day assault pack. Some people prefer something with no outer pockets, so they would not be running a setup like me with the uh, jungle pouch and the drum pouch on the outside. Some people prefer, you know, something different. Some people might just say, like, oh, why don't you use these rough? You're, you're right, but this bag works well enough for what it needed to. Um, it, this doesn't have a waist belt, or it did, and then I took it off. I don't like using waist belts. I didn't like the waist belt that came on this, so I don't even mess with it. But, um... Yeah, uh, like I said, the setup uh, is for me. The setup works for me and my group. It is not a setup that might work for you. Uh, like I said, no cold weather gear. I, I don't mind getting wet. So, yeah, that's kind of it. Uh, this video was asked for a ton. Um, a lot of guys are curious what I keep in the bag. It's in a lot of the photos that I would post on Instagram. Uh, for good reason, like I explained earlier, really like this bag. I think it's great. Unfortunately, they get harder and harder to get every day. This is one of the US made ones, um, very compliant, all that nonsense. It's one of the older ones. The newer ones don't have that black, that black zipper. Uh, I don't mind it, but you know, your mileage may vary. I'm, I'm sure I'll get people in the comments or people messaging me saying like, oh, black doesn't exist in nature. I don't care. Um, it's negligible compared to all the camouflage on this. And if I was really that concerned, I, uh, I have a ghillie blanket that I just bungee onto here. Um, and funny enough, if I was using that ghillie blanket, it would go in the drum pouch instead of probably the wet weather jacket. That wet weather jacket might just get stuffed in the bag or in the lid. And instead, that ghillie blanket would be there. So yeah, that's it for this setup. Uh, kind of moving forward. I want to get a little bit, I have a couple more of my setup videos.